Today I'm going to show you how to make the absolute best mouse ears that there are to make. The ones we are making today my kids will give out for free at Disney to spread some kindness and show some aloha spirit during our trip in a couple of weeks. These are for all ages, male or female, just omit the bow and the bedazzlement and you have them for boys or men, but you can otherwise just let your creative juices flow with how you want to decorate your ears. But I'll show you how we did these to get you started. The link to the pattern pieces for these ears in baby, youth, and traditional size mouse headbands are below in the description box, but if you're watching from our website, alohasewingcompany.com, welcome and follow along. Today we're going to make the traditional sized mouse ears. So I went ahead and printed out my pattern pieces and cut them out. You're going to need a one inch wide headband if you want to use my pattern piece to cover the headband with fabric. Choose whatever kind of ribbon or trim and decorative pieces that you want. And this is a satin headband, so you can cover it with fabric or you don't have to, but you can get them really inexpensive on places like Amazon. These are some decorative buttons and roses. I'm making Beauty and the Beast themed right now. And here are a variety of different trims that you can use, ribbon, anything that you have on hand. This is Rick Rack, so that you can decorate them after you've sewn them. You're also going to need a 1 4th inch piece of foam. This will give the ears some sturdiness to stand up. If you don't have foam, you can use poster board or cardboard, but I definitely recommend 1 4th inch foam. You're also going to need a little bit of polyfill stuffing to add some fluff to those ears if you desire. Let's get started. These are two 5 by 5 inch squares. You don't have to cut the squares out, but I do it to make it easier. I'm going to turn one of them over and get my cutting line pattern piece. Put it at the top of that five by five inch square and go ahead and trace all the way around it. You wanna have about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric below your ear trace line so that way we can tuck it under a little bit later and it'll make more sense. Now get your sewing line pattern and you will see at the bottom it has a little area that you're gonna remember not to sew later and go ahead and place it right into the middle of your already traced ear shape. Make little lines at the lines on the pattern piece where your do not sew area is, and then trace all the way around the rest of your pattern piece. This sewing line that you are tracing now is going to be the line that you're going to use as your guide when you go to sew these ears. Now you're going to stack this fabric right on top of your other piece of fabric, and we're going to cut them out all at the same time. Remember I mentioned we're going to leave about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric down there at the bottom. I just cut it at the curve so that it's curved just like my ear would be down there and do not cut that area off. Now you're going to separate these two pieces, get your sewing line pattern once again and trace that onto the back of your other ear. This is going to be your guide for sewing, like I mentioned before. So you want one sewing line pattern marked on the back of each ear. Now I'm going to show you how to make the front mouse ears. You're gonna do it exactly the same, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you have a directional fabric, meaning if you wanna show a certain image on your mouse ear. So get your cutting line pattern piece and you're gonna place it over the area you want to cut, but if you wanna make sure it's nice and centered, you wanna fold your cutting line pattern piece in half so that you create a crease down the middle, and then you're going to place it over the image that you want on your fabric to show on your fabric ear. Don't forget, you're going to cut two for the front of your mouth headband and two for the back. So you're gonna to wanna to trace two different fabric images, and don't forget when you're cutting along the bottom to leave about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric as well. 
Now we have two of the front ears cut out. We're going to grab the back ears and place them with the right sides of your fabric together. Pin or clip this in place a couple of times so that it doesn't shift as you're sewing. And then we're going to get ready to sew our two mouse ears together. We're going to bring it to the sewing machine and starting at your left do not sew line. Follow that all the way around your mouse ear and sew all the way to that right do not sew line. And here I'm going to show you one more time and then for our beginner sewers, we are going to bring this over to our sewing machine and show you how to make one of these. So we're going to start with our mouse ear to the side and we're going to start at the left do not sew mark. Put your presser foot down and bring your needle into that do not sew line along that sewing guide. You're going to start stitching, back stitch a couple of times and stitch slowly till you get to that first corner and keep your needle in the fabric lift your presser foot, rotate your fabric so that it aligns with the curve of this ear, and then start sewing slowly. You wanna sew right on the inside of your traced line for that sewing line pattern. Once you get back down to your corner, you're going to keep your needle in the fabric, lift your presser foot, rotate your fabric and continue sewing to that do not sew line. And here's what it looks like when you're all finished. Again, I sewed right to the inside of the sewing line and we have this opening down at the bottom that we did not sew. Now we want to go ahead and cut to match this up and then we're gonna cut at each corner at the bottom right up to the stitches. We want to cut this here so it reduces the bulk when we flip this right side out and it'll help that corner lay nice and flat. So just cut off that fabric right there. And then you're going to use pinking shears and cut all the way around your mouse ear if you have them. If you don't have them, go all the way around your curves and cut some slits in the fabric right up to the stitch line but making sure not to cut through the stitch line. This is going to also help to reduce the bulk and make sure your fabric rounds those corners neatly when we flip this right side out. So go ahead and flip it right side out. Smoothen it out with your fingers so that it lays nice and circular. I also like to use a chopstick and press all of my seams out and make sure to poke my bottom two ear corners out. So now that extra fabric that we left at the bottom of our ear flip it to the inside of your ear. This is gonna help us to be able to sew close that bottom later on, and that's why we wanted a little bit of extra fabric there. If you have any wrinkles, go ahead and iron your ears flat now and get out all of those wrinkles. And then we're gonna work on cutting our 1 4th inch foam. You're going to get your foam or poster poured insert pattern piece and trace it onto your foam, your cardboard, your poster board, whatever you're using, and go ahead and cut out two. Once you have two cut out, go ahead and fold them inwards as a tri-fold and we're going to put them into the bottom of our mouse ear hole opening. Once it's inside, go ahead and unfold it and get it all straightened out and nice. I like the foam for this the best because it is the most lightweight and it really gives nice structure to the ears. Go ahead and use your chopstick and smoothen out all the edges. Make sure all your seams are nice and flat and your ears look circular. 
you can leave them like this and go ahead and sew the bottom closed with your machine or you can hand stitch it just like this by closing it into a sandwich or you can add a little bit of fluff. You can add some polyfill stuffing to the very front of your ears. I use about a palm full and I put it just to the front of the foam inside of the ear and then I smush it and flatten it out a little bit. You can measure with your heart, make them more fluffy by adding more polyfill if you want to. But after you add your polyfill stuffing, go ahead and sew close the bottom with your machine or by hand stitching. I'm just using my machine because we cover up this area anyways when it's on the ear so it's not going to show. So if you have a headband that is one inch wide, you can use the pattern piece for the headband so that we can cover it with fabric. And then fold your fabric in half and put the pattern piece cut on fold side down at the edge of that fold. Trace all the way around it and then cut this piece out while it's still folded together. Now you're going to need a glue gun and your one inch headband. This one inch wide headband is about 14 and a half inches all the way around. And so this pattern piece fits perfectly for that. It will fit most standard size uh, one inch headbands as well. If you have a satin or other decorative headband you're already using, you do not have to cover yours with fabric if you don't want. I just decided to do that to show you how to do it today. So place a piece of glue on the end of your headband like I'm doing here, and you're gonna fold the fabric end over it, and then wrap your fabric all the way around the headband and glue down the other side as well. Next, I like to make two slits into the fabric on each side of the headband, but not all the way up to the headband because you don't want these slits to show. But I do that so that we can fold this fabric over on the sides a little bit easier. And you're just going to hot glue them down as you go. Don't worry how this looks in the very mid center of your headband because later we're going to cover that up with a piece of trim or ribbon. Here's what it looks like now. And now we need to go ahead and put our mouse ear guide marks onto our headband. The printable pattern piece also includes a measuring tool that I created to help you make your placement guide marks a lot easier to make. So you're going to use that and measure all the way around your headband to see what length headband you have. Mine is about 14 and a half inches. Once you know how long it is, you need to divide that by two so that you can find the middle point of your headband. Mine is going to be 7.25. So I'm going to go to 7.25, which will be the very middle part of my headband. And I'm going to make a small dot right in the middle of the headband. That marks the mid center point. Now I'm making the traditional ears. So I'm going to go to the guide here for the traditional ears. And I'm going to line up the dot with my measuring tool to the dot that I just made. And then we're gonna make two small dots where the arrows are here and the other arrow is here. And that's where we're going to place both of our ears. If you are making a Mickey headband, you don't need to make that center dot. That's for bow placement. 
So our ears, our inner ear piece will go right where the dot is on both sides. So you can choose to sew the bottom of your ear to your headband if you want to, but I'm going to use a little small line of hot glue and line my inner ear up with my side dot. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and these are so cute. They can stay just like this if you want them to for boys. They will not come off. I have made a ton of these. If you are just keeping it like this and you wanna sew it for a little more sturdiness, you can. But if you're going to bedazzle it a little bit and add some trim and embellishment, you can just use that small line of hot glue. It will not go anywhere. So I'm going to use this braided trim here and just bring it all the way across the top to measure that placement. And then I'm going to cut it to length and I want the length to go from the inner side seam to the outer side seam on each of my ears. And this frays really bad so I like to put a little bit of hot glue on the edges just so that it stays and doesn't fray. Now I'm going to hot glue that down. Again, you can sew it if you want to, but I just measure two pieces and I hot glue them down all the way across the front. We're gonna start by putting your ribbon or trim on the very side seam, putting a small line of glue all the way across the front, bring in your ribbon or trim right on top of that, and then gluing the other piece right across the side seam on the other side. Do this for both ears. If you have a different type of fabric that frays, but you can burn the edges, it will also hold them together so that they don't fray. The other ones would burn <laughs> in flames if I tried to burn the side edges. So now I'm gonna get this pom-pom trim and rotate it all the way around the curve of my ear so I can measure how much I should use. And I'm going to cut two of these, one for each ear. And then I'm gonna use a super tiny line of glue all the way around the ear to attach them going over the side seams. So I did end up putting a small rose right on the front of this gold piece before I finished, but now I'm going to show you how to make the bow. And this is the bow for the traditional ears. Go ahead and place it onto your fabric and you can either trace around it or just go ahead and cut it out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece out and also cut my bow center piece. This will cover up the center of the bow. To make the bow, Get your bow fabric with the pretty side on the top and the wrong side on the bottom. Fold it in half and sew a line using a 1 4 inch seam allowance right across the raw edges at the top. Now we're gonna turn this tube right side out so that the pretty side of the fabric is showing and the seam should be facing you right in the middle. Fold this in half long ways and make a crease right there at the fold so that you have a crease down the center of this bow. Open it back up and you're gonna fold each side right over top of that middle crease that you just made. You want the sides to overlap just a little bit in the middle. And then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and sew right across those two overlapped edges in the middle. stitch does not have to be perfect. This will not show in your finished bow. Go ahead and flip this bow to the right side up and fold it in half. And then you're going to fan fold 
your both edges back out so that it meets in the back where your middle fold is. This is sort of like a tuxedo bow. If you wanna make it a little bit fluffier, you can also start on one end and use your thumbs to pinch it as you go and then grip it in the back and cinch this all together about three or four times. And I like doing it this way because it makes the bow just a little fluffier. Then you're going to get some kind of ribbon or thread, whatever you have, and bring it around the front and pinch it on the sides and tie this bow in a knot in the back. You can sew the center of this if you prefer, but I like to just tie it up and I never have any issues. So this is what it looks like. If you need to adjust it to center it, you can just move that middle piece you use to tie it up until you have it nice and centered and even. Then we're going to grab our bow center piece and we're going to put a little bit of hot glue on the ends, not in the middle, and fold it so that we have two overlapping pieces in the middle here. You can also iron this into that tri-folded shape that I'm doing if you'd prefer, but satin doesn't really iron well, so I'm using a little hot glue instead. Flip it over to the front and you have the nice bow center. Place a little piece of hot glue, a little dot, on the top and bottom, but not in the center of your bow. Place the middle of your bow center right on top of that and pinch it in the back. You don't wanna put hot glue across the front because sometimes that hot glue can show through the fabric. So once you turn this around to the back, you're going to clip your top end like I'm doing here just to make it a little bit shorter. We're going to glue that down over the back of the bow. And then you're gonna put a little bit of glue at the top of the other bow piece here after you trim it. And you're gonna fold it over to hide that seam, that raw edge, excuse me. And then you're gonna put a little bit more hot glue and fold it over so that it glues nicely. Here is your bow and it is ready to just attach to the top of your fabric headband. You can sew it in place right where your center dot is, but I'm just going to get a small line of hot glue and place it all across the bottom, but not kind of towards the end pieces, just across the bottom to hold it in place. And more than you'd imagine, a little bit goes a long way. So don't put too much so that way your glue won't show on your finished product. I also like to get a little dot of glue and put it behind each side of the bow right on the ear here and press that down. That just holds the bow perfectly in place and just gives it a little bit more of an added touch. If you've covered your headband with fabric like I have here, the only thing that we have left to do is to add our ribbon or trim to the inside of that fabric headband. I'm using a velvet I go ahead and fold under the end and glue it down so that you don't see that raw edge. And then we're going to match the inside of our headband with the back of our ribbon and just glue it in place all the way on the inside, all the way around that headband. Once you get to the end of the headband, clip your ribbon short, fold over the end like you did on the first part of your headband and just glue it in place. enjoy this tutorial and have fun sewing along with me 
please, please, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see all of our easy sewing patterns as they're released. Visit alohasewingcompany.com or the link is down below in the description box on YouTube to see all of our super easy sewing patterns that you can print at home so you can start to sew faster. We make sewing patterns for literally everything from baby items, kids clothes, decorations, holiday stuff and gifts, bags and more. And before you go, mahalo. Thank you.